covered type 1, 2 and 3 hypersensitivities, underlying mechanisms. Recall that, all of them involve antibodies. Type 1 hypersensitivity involves IgE antibodies. Type 2 and 3 involve IgG and IgM antibodies. But, type 4 hypersensitivity reactions are different from all of these because, type 4 reactions involve T cells. Let's talk about the main features of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. Type 4 hypersensitivity reactions are cell mediated reactions that result in damage to host cells and tissues. These reactions are initiated by T cells. The main T cell types involved are T helper type 1 cells, TH17 cells, and killer or cytotoxic T cells. Antigens are presented to these cells by APCs such as dendritic cells. The damage to host is caused by activated macrophages and other leukocytes such as neutrophils and natural killer cells. Antigens triggering these reactions can be foreign agents that alter self-antigens once inside the body. These are basically chemicals that covalently bind to normal glycoproteins present on skin cells. Example of such chemical is neurociel. Neurochial is present in the surface oils of the leaves of poison ivy that cause contact hypersensitivity. These antigens can also be autoantigens that are recognized by autoreactive T cells. Recall that autoreactive T cells can be present in case of failure of self tolerance mechanisms. Antigens derived from intracellular pathogens can also trigger type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. Mostly these microbes are those that escape elimination by immune mechanisms and cause prolonged infections. For example, Mycobacterium. Like all other hypersensitivity reactions, type 4 hypersensitivity also develops in two stages sensitization stage and effector stage sensitization stage refers to the first or primary contact with the antigen during sensitization stage T cells are sensitized and antigen specific memory T cells are generated sensitization in type 4 hypersensitivity occurs in a period of 7 to 10 days Effector stage refers to the secondary or subsequent contact with the antigen. During the effector stage, the host tissue damage takes place. And this damage is apparent only after one to two days of second exposure. This delay in the manifestation of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions is the hallmark of these reactions. This delay is due to the time taken by T cells for activation differentiation, cytokine, and chemokine secretion. Also, the recruitment of macrophages and other leukocytes to the site of antigen exposure takes time. For this reason, type 4 hypersensitivity reactions are also known as delayed type hypersensitivity, abbreviated as DTH. Let's understand in detail the general underlying mechanism of these reactions. As we said, type 4 hypersensitivity reactions are initiated by T cells. Now, we know that there are two main T cell subtypes. CD4 positive T cells, that differentiate into T helper cells. And, CD8 positive T cells, that differentiate into cytotoxic or killer T cells. Which T cell will initiate the reaction depends on how the antigens are presented to these naive T cells. If peptide fragments derived from antigens are presented in complex with MHC2 molecules, CD4 positive or helper T cells are activated. On the other hand, if antigens are presented in complex with MHC1 molecules, CD8 positive or cytotoxic D cells are activated.
Contact hypersensitivity caused by poison ivy involves CD8 positive T cells. These cytotoxic T cells are sensitized during primary contact with the antigen. And, on secondary contact, activated cytotoxic T cells use their cytotoxic mechanisms to damage the skin cells and cause local inflammation. Since the majority of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions involve CD4 positive, helper type 1 cells. We will discuss the mechanism of such reactions in detail. Let's begin. Suppose an intracellular pathogen enters the body for the first time. They infect the local host cells at the site of entry. Also, these antigens are taken up by dendritic cells, which process them and display them as peptide MHC2 complex on their surface. These dendritic cells migrate to nearby lymph node and interact with naive CD4 positive T cells. In the presence of cytokines secreted by dendritic cells and resident macrophages, they get activated and become T helper type 1 cells. These cells undergo proliferation and differentiation to form effector T helper type 1 cells and antigen specific memory T cells. Next they migrate to the site of infection and works towards the elimination of the pathogens by cell mediated responses. All these events during the sensitization stage require at least one to two weeks. Now, the person is sensitized and antigen specific memory T cells are present in the body. Let's find out what happens when the person encounters the same intracellular pathogen for the second time. When the individual is exposed to the same antigen for the second time, effect a stage results. This time antigen specific memory T cells are already present. Dendritic cells take up these pathogens, process them and present them, in complex with MHC2 molecules. The resident macrophages also get activated by pathogen and, they start releasing cytokines such as interleukin-12. Memory T cells interact with the antigens presented by dendritic cells. And in the presence of cytokines released by activated macrophages, they proliferate and differentiate into effector T helper type 1 cells. These cells further release cytokines such as interferon gamma, tumor necrosis factor beta, and interleukin-2. These accumulated cytokines at the site of infection, now recruit monocytes from circulation to the site. Recall that, monocytes differentiate into macrophages when they migrate from blood to tissues. These macrophages also get activated and, they further secrete cytokines and chemokines that, recruit more monocytes, neutrophils, natural killer cells to the site of infection. All these activated effector cells release inflammatory mediators that damage host cells at the site of infection. Together the immune cells and the mediators released by them result in the extensive amplification of the response. The events of effector stage takes one to two days and, only after that the damage to the host is evident. As the reaction fully develop, the majority of participating cells are macrophages and other innate immune cells. Only about 5% cells are antigen-specific Th1 cells. Thus, we now understand that T helper type 1 cells are the important initiators of type 4 hypersensitivity reactions and activated macrophages are the principal effector cells of these reactions. The damage is caused to the host because of heightened phagocytic activity and non-specific destruction of host cells by neutrophils, natural killer cells etc. That's all in today's video lecture. I hope this lecture is helpful to you. Thank you for watching.